the Marshall Islands are about halfway between uh, uh, Hawaii in the upper right-hand corner, that's last slide, and Australia in the lower left-hand corner. They, uh, are, there are 29 atolls. They're spread across the Pacific Ocean and expanse about 600 miles east to west and 600 miles north to south. Um, after World War II, we gained essentially possession of these islands. They are now a sovereign nation, the Republic of the Marshall Islands. Uh, I wouldn't say they're independent by way of economic interest in the United States. They certainly aren't when you look at the United Nations votes time and time again. Well, we're going to be talking a little bit about Bikini Atoll, which probably most of you have heard of up in the upper left-hand corner. I'll mention Ujilang and Awaitak, Kwajalein Atoll here. And there is an island that is off this map called Keeley down uh, in the south. This is Bikini Atoll that we're looking at right now. Uh, <clears throat> After World War II, we decided this would be a good place to test our atomic bombs, as you again probably know. From 1946 to 1958, we dropped 67 atomic bombs out there. We dropped uh, uh, a tonnage equivalent to 1.6 Hiroshima bombs every single day for 12 years there. And every single day for 12 years, the equivalent of that. There are, were then about 50,000 islanders out there in uh, the 1940s. We went to Bikini Island to ask these islanders if they would leave to allow us to drop bombs in and around their islands for the, good, the goodness of mankind, that we might be able to stop war forevermore. The, uh, the islanders being a simple people that long and having been relatively unexposed to other civilizations or what we might have argued were civilized people, uh, acquiesced and they were moved to Ronjerik, which is an atoll about 125 miles to the east. There were only about 200 of them, to be honest with you at that point. Uh, it was determined that those islands in Ronjerik atoll were insufficient to support the people and they began to starve to death, literally. And over that period of time, the U.S. had to supplement their diet with processed foods, canned foods, and of course that had its own consequences. Uh, it was determined that these people would be relocated to Ujilang, in the far west of this expanse of islands, about 100 miles west of their beloved Bikini Island. And they took a number of the younger islanders out to Ujilang to build dwellings for this population. And at the conclusion of that period of time when the buildings were ready, the U.S. decided that we, they, would drop their next atomic bomb on Anawetak, which is an island north of Ujilang, closer to Ujilang, and that they were going to displace or move the people of Anawetak to Ujilang. So that's what happened to that people. They, they uh, subsequently decided to move the Bikini people to Kwajalein. Now at that point in time, we had begun to build a military base there and the Bikini Islanders were housed in a tent city. They were not able to have access to plant life to support themselves, they were not able to fish there. And they were there for a period of less than a year as the US and the Bikinians sought relocation elsewhere. Finally, they hit upon Keeley Island the island I mentioned to you as being at the southernmost extreme of this expanse. Keeley Island, over the course of the next 10 to 15 years, proved also to be insufficient uh, in terms of providing them with substance, substances. Uh, they weren't able to find enough food. The waters were too rough to support fishing there. And they again began to starve to death. In the 70s, after years and years of the Bikinians petitioning U.S. authorities to be allowed to move back to their island, to Bikini, US the U.S. decided that, by, by, that now Bikini was safe to return to. And a few of the islanders did agree to return, though, for the most part, they were aware. They had learned of the consequences of radioactivity, and they knew that they might be doing so at great harm or great risk. The few that moved back in 1975 uh, learned, unfortunately, to their great uh, detriment that, in fact, they were in peril to continue to live there. The radioactive surveys determined that uh, the food, the fish life, had all been poisoned, and they were once again removed. And to this day, those islanders st are still spread about all of these expansive islands and, uh, and seeking return to Bikini. Now, in 1954, among those bombs that were dropped on Bikini Island was the so-called Bravo test, 
We actually, we dropped, actually of the 67 bombs that we dropped out there, 23 were bob dropped in and around Bikini. In 1954, the largest bomb of all, the uh, Bravo test was detonated there. And as indicated in documents that have since been released, authorities knew that the consequences of the radioactive fallout would be severe to the east of, those isle of Bikini. And yet we did not remove the people of Ronjalap. That's another atoll that's about 100 miles east of, of, the, of Bikini. Um, on the day of that detonation, those people thought it was snowing and their children played in the dust that was falling from the sky. And the consequences continue. In the 80s, the people of the islands had the chance to petition our Congress for restitution for the legacy of these bombs, the physical anomalies. And I just want to read you a couple of those testimonies. Two of my children died. One of them was born defective. It didn't look like a human. It looked just like the inside of a giant clam. Another testimony. One of my babies was born in 1955, and it did not have any bones in its body. I have had very many problems with childbearing. I saw three different women give birth to strange things after the bomb. One was like the bark of a coconut tree. One was like a watery mass that was not human-like. Another was again like a watery mass of grapes or something like that. We are very angry at the U.S. and I'll tell you why. Have you ever seen a jellyfish baby born looking like a bunch of grapes? So the only reason you knew it was alive, you could see its brain. So those are just a few of the many testimonies. You can look at any of the books I have over here and find similar testimonies from people of those islands. And it wasn't just the Bikinians. It wasn't just the, the Ranjalapis. It was all the people of all these islands. All these islands experienced radioactive poisoning or, or toxicity. Um, the problem continues in other respects. We now have the so-called Ronald Reagan missile defense site on Kwajalein. Kwajalein Island is one of the islands within Kwajalein Atoll. And the missile defense site is now used to launch missiles from, uh, from which to launch missiles that intercept missiles fired from Vandenberg Air Base, Air Force Base in California, and other bases on our west coast. It's an island about three miles long by about a mile wide or at its maximum width. There are a couple of hundred military personnel there and less than a thousand military contractors there, and they live in what has been described as sort of a, um, a, a where did Opie live? Mayberry, sort of a 1950s idyllic situation. About a mile away across the waters is an island called Ebai, Ebai, E-Y-E. -E. I've been conducting a, a, a Google alert for two years trying to find information about Ebi. And the, about all I have learned is that it is referred to as the slum of the Pacific, variously also referred to as the asshole of the Pacific. There are 18,000 islanders, islanders living there on an island that's about a mile long and about a half mile wide. That was an island that was depicted in one of the slides here. The, the water is uh, oftentimes not potable. The power is oftentimes not on. The healthcare system is nearly non-existent. It's the most densely populated place on Earth. Can you believe this? I mean, you, you really, as I'll say again later on in my talk, this, these seems to be, seem to be things that you really just can't even make up. Uh, the opportunity I may have to meet some of these Marshall Islanders arises from the fact that 8,000 of Mar the Marshall Island people now live in northwestern Arkansas, most of them in and around Springdale. And they came here because working in the Tyson chicken processing plant is a more appealing alternative than living in places like Ebi and the capital of the, of the Republic of the Marshall Islands, a place called Majuro. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that correctly. But uh, it's a, it's a god-awful situation in my opinion. <clears throat>